3,000 Australian babies are born with congenital heart disease every year. That's eight a day, making it the most common birth defect and the leading cause of death in infants. For the first time, researchers are attempting to identify potential genetic links to CHD, helping to improve diagnosis and treatment for so-called heart kids. To learn more, we're joined by Lisa Paisley, whose three kids have CHD, and cardiologist, Associate Professor Gary Scholler. Thank you both for coming in tonight. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Professor, I'll start with you. Those numbers, they just sound extraordinary. I had no idea just how prevalent CHD actually is. What are the numbers in the broader community? Well, we know that there are somewhere between 180 and 200,000 Australians who are living with congenital heart abnormality. Not all of them have a serious problem, but many of them are travelling a life journey having started in childhood with, a, with a, a major abnormality. We know about a quarter of children who have, um, have an abnormality of the heart will need to have treatment in the first year of life, which is a huge deal for the children themselves, but of course for the families. And the good news is people with congenital heart disease are living a lot longer these days. But, but that means that there are more people living with it, I guess. A absolutely right. So we've seen a significant drop in the death rate, particularly in the higher end of the socio-economic um, uh, uh, strata internationally, uh, where we've seen probably a 30 to 40 per cent drop in mortality rate over the last 20 years. Uh, and we expect that that will continue. And yes, as a result of that, there are more survivors and survivors who are in better condition. We, we would expect 97% of the children on, of whom we operate, possibly a little bit more, to, to survive and do well. So babies who, are, who were born with congenital heart disease and toddlers living with it, what, what does it mean for them? How, how does it show up? What sort of quality of life can they have? Well, we, we know objectively that there are significant impacts on quality of life if there are complex lesions uh, present. But I think quality of life is often to do with how you perceive yourself and how the world perceives you. And one of the important messages uh, for families uh, who I look after is that having an abnormality is not the same as having a problem. And one needs to move to a point where you can see children as being healthy and that they can go on to the, live their best lives going on into the future. Lisa, your three oh, beautiful kids, <laughs> they, they all have congenital heart disease. One of them is Xander, who's featured in the Heart Kids video. Yes. Before we chat to you a bit more, let's have a look at that video. Okay. The biggest killers of Australian babies. Thankfully, he survived but his scars are a constant reminder of how lucky he was. Every year, 3,000 babies are born with congenital heart disease. There is no known cure. This February, show your heart and help little hearts. Donate today at heartkids.org.au. I don't know how you sit there and watch that. I, <laughs> I find that just... Uh... It, it, very moving seeing that beautiful little boy like that. It must be heartbreaking to, to see your kids, all three of them, go through this. Heartbreaking, Jacinta doesn't begin to explain any of it. It's the tip of the iceberg. You get the diagnoses and it's, you're devastated. You see them taking your baby off to surgery and it's just gut-wrenching. And then to see them after surgery just is your heart is ripped out of your chest and just shattered into a million pieces. Um, their bravery, their strength, their courage, they fight so hard. It's just, it's indescribable. And they don't, they don't know how to do anything different, so they fight. And that's where I find my strength, in them. How old are your three now? Xander is three, Scarlett is two, and Allegra is six months. What does, it, what does it mean for them, for their quality of life going forward, that they're carrying this congenital heart disease? They have a lifelong journey of follow-up appointments with cardiologists. They will have surgeries which will be maintenance or repair in the future. In Xander's case, pacemaker battery changes. 
Um, he, Xander, has pacemaker clinics to attend just to ensure that the, the function is there and also the use um, is checked. We've got Scarlett who is on medication twice, twice daily to you know, assist in the functioning of her heart. And Allegra has surgery coming up in the next few months, so the outcome of that is unknown. So a lot of it is the unknown. So you just live each day as it comes. You take nothing for granted and you just are blessed every day that they're here. And it must take an incredible toll on you as the parents yes. as well, watching it's... Your, your little one struggle like this. Yes. You, you think you're doing the right thing for them by holding their hand and just being there for them, but it's you. Nothing prepares you for what you have to go through with them. You're an incredibly, incredibly brave woman. <laughs> Professor Schola, you're working on research to identify potential genetic links uh, to CHD. Do, do you know that it is genetic in some ways? Well, we know that some cases. Um, there are some cases and some situations where the likelihood of a genetic uh, cause is very high. Um, in families where more than one individual has a, a structural abnormality from birth, we know almost half of those uh, families will have an identifiable uh, genetic abnormality. As in Lisa's family's case? Well, w I mean, we're, st we're still going down that pathway uh, with her, but yes, I mean, absolutely uh, uh, a stark indicator. But of course, we don't know if there is a genetic abnormality exactly how that will play itself out in, in any individual. That's very much about what's called the phenotype or the way that the abnormality manifests itself. So what, was the, what would be the significance of, of these findings then for future generations? Uh, look, uh, it, it's huge because understanding the genetics of congenital heart disease will help us to uh, advise and inform families, individuals about what they might expect, and we will be better at doing that in the future. Uh, the genetics is also going to lead us, we hope, to understand more about the nature of heart abnormality in a way that changes how we treat it. So we can develop uh, precision or personalised medicine where we can deliver treatments which we know are going to be more effective and less likely to produce complications. Lisa, would it have made a difference to you if this research had been available when you had your babies? It is available to me now, afterwards. Um, in hindsight, I don't think I would have changed anything because now that I have my babies, I wouldn't change them for the world. What about being, would, able, to, but, what about being able to but, prepare for what might be coming? It's knowledge is power. So having just, just knowing... Well, we went into pregnancies knowing that there was a chance of getting subsequent heart disease in them. So you just, you know that it's there, but you hope for the best. It's, yeah, this research is absolutely vital. It's, we came to the conclusion that we were just going to live the rest of our lives not knowing why our children were born this way and knowing that the funding, not the funding, sorry, that the, the research was available just provided so much hope to us and if not for, to change anything for our children but hopefully for future generations after that. And February is the month where there is a huge drive to, to raise funds for congenital heart disease. That's on the Heart Kids website. We've been running the details on the screen. Where will the funds go? Well, I think the important... Uh, role of Heart Kids as an advocacy organisation and delivering services both within the metropolitan area and also wanting to expand their services outside of the metropolitan area to regional Australia is incredibly important and the funds will be partly used in that and partly to help the research that I'm involved with and that the um, Australian Genomics Project is, uh, is sponsoring as well with with the encouragement of heart kids as well. And Lisa, do you want to say anything about uh, urging people to donate to this cause? Help little hearts. Heart Kids is just such a wonderful, wonderful charity. They mean the world to me and also just the support that you get from them is absolutely incredible. They're doing wonderful things. I think so. when anybody sees the, the pictures of your divine three yeah. angels, <laughs> <laughs> how could you not donate? Thank you both so much for coming in tonight it's and informing us. Oh, it was lovely to be here. Thank, Thank you. you for having us.